everyone. Welcome back to Studio 33 Art by Kay. Today I'm going to be doing a placemat which is 38 centimeters wide. Um, it's got a cork backing on it already which is great and I just bought this from our local Kmart for about three dollars I think. I've had it for a little while. Um, you don't need to do anything to prepare these. Just give it a quick wipe over with some isopropyl alcohol just to clean it. Um, and I found this, I think you use it for um, cooking vegetables and so on um, to steamer. It's like a steamer. And I thought, oh, when I saw that, I'm just going to give that a go, pour some paint through it. don't know what's going to happen. Um, it's got these little stands, so I'll put those on there to stand, keep it up off the um, base here. Marked my centre, so I'm going to put the centre of that onto the centre of the... I can find it there and I'm going to let the paint run through here and also try and get it through these little grooves that are in there as well. I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, I just thought it'd be a bit of fun for me and a bit of fun for you to watch it. Um, so to make it really easy I'm just using the Araldo Di Paolo pouring paints um, that are already mixed up. They're a little bit thinner than the um, Montmartre pouring paints which I often use um, they're a little bit thicker so quite often if you're doing this sort of thing you might want the paints to be a little bit thicker so that the pattern holds um, but you know in for a penny in for a pound I don't know what's going to happen so we'll, we'll just give it a go and we'll try these colors together so here we go I'm just going to lay down these colors in random order and this one is the cool yellow so I'll start by just trying to get that paint to cover the base here and go out through the holes as well, through the side, those slots, and get it to go all the way around. It's going to run through fairly quickly. Now I'm going to put the um, magenta. So kind of, it's a fairly large area for me to try and cover. So I think I'll just swirl it around and see what happens. And this is the turquoise. So I'm kind of starting in the middle and then trying to get the paint to go around. It's flowing through very quickly. I don't know what the pattern's going to be like. This is purple. may have been better just try, trying to restrict the paint to, to the center rather than taking it all the way around but who knows and this is a very pale color called skyway i'm not sure how much paint i'll need to put through there I did have it in the center i think this turntable actually gets a little bit off balance Perhaps I could do with shouting myself to a new one. Okay, well that's interesting. And just let that colour run through. It's coming through. I might need a little bit more paint in there. So I'll um, I think I'll go the bright pink again, or magenta it is actually. I'll just put it into the middle now instead of all the way around the outside. And some more of the turquoise. And some more purple. Okay, so I'm just going to let that drip for a second. And I'm just tilting the tape, turntable to try and get it to um, move evenly. It's dripping through. Very interesting mishmash of colour there. Well, that's pretty. Okay, so I'm just going to lift that off very quickly. Pop it over there. And there we go. Wow. 
that's uh, interesting. I can't really see any uniformity to any pattern there at all. Um, so now, I'm just going to put a little bit of this leftover gold paint that I've got around the edge just to help that to flow to the edges and over the edge. Just want to make sure there's paint around the edge. It's actually a very big edge. And that literally will just help the paint to um, roll over the edge when it gets there. At the moment it looks like some crazy sort of pizza. Well, I don't think I'd want to eat something that looked like that. This is something that, um, you know, you can get your children or grandchildren to have a go at. It's a lot of fun just pouring paint through an object and find all sorts of different things and they can have a look around and see if they can find something that they'd like to, um, to do. And just to see what the outcome will be. Right, so now I'm going to just spin this. I can see it's moved this way a lot. But we'll just spin it and see how we go. Didn't have to spin far for that to go out on that side. So I might bring this slightly this way. Get the weight over this way a bit. Wowzers. That's actually really quite um, something. <laughs> I'm loving these little round circles where the drips have gone through. Not so much this here. I do want to still get this um, paint over the edge here a bit better. Let's see if I can just tilt it that way. I'll just give it one more spin and do it the other way. The center has stayed in the center, so that's interesting. Okay, so now I'm just looking at this and it's got some amazing shape here where you're coming through like this. And then these circles that are like discs coming through, which would have been the drips. This here looks like a massive jellyfish. So it's actually got some interesting things going on. So I'm going to now just um, use my heat embossing tool just to burst any bubbles, hopefully not bring any cells through. So I just want to do a bit of a wrecking line and just through the middle here. So this is just a bamboo skewer and I'm just using the um, flat end of it. I'm just going to drag that through the paint here just to get a bit more shape into the middle. I really don't want to upset that too much. Okay. Would have been interesting to see how it would have gone if I'd just poured the paint through the very middle part instead of trying to get it to spread all the way out. Just sort of done the middle about that much. Um, so I might try that actually, just to see what we get. Okay, so I've just rinsed off my little um, sieve thing. And I'm going to, this time, um, just get it to go just around the first few um, little holes instead of trying to take it all the way around to the outside. 
Um, or I could take it around the outside and not come into the middle. Maybe I'll do that. So I'm just trying to find where the center was. I think that was pretty much where it was here. Um, yeah, so I think I'll take it around the outside and not try and get it to cover over everything. So here we go. Um, I'm not sure I like the yellow in there too much. I think I preferred it without it, so I'll leave the yellow out this time. So I'm just going to go around the outside few. Then I'm going to just go in through that one middle hole. It's nice when the paint starts to drip when it gets to the end. That's when you can start to get all these um, spherical sort of shapes. I'm just going to run it around the edge here one more time. lift it up one two three just spin that out I've got a lot of paint coming off here so I'm not going to spin it too fast or I'm going to end up wearing all of that the other way so we've got a bit of yellow there from the coat that I'd done underneath but I'm liking this I've got much more uniformity in the shape here before it was sort of much more um, random where I'd had so much paint going through all the all the holes this time because I kept it more confined. It's given me a totally different pattern. You can still see where the drips have come, come through, which is great. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally drip the yellow paint all the way around. just so it doesn't look weird how we had that little bit of paint still there. And now I'm just going to get my meat skewer and I'm just going to draw circles through there. give it a gentle tilt just to encourage it to go that way center seems to be moving but not much else Do a little tiny bit of modification in the centre here.
I just give it one last little spin just to stretch these out a little bit. I feel like I just want to do a little bit more modification, just bringing some um, some wrecking lines just through these guys here, from about here. nice bright piece and um, I'm sure that would look nice in the center of a table with a pot plant in the middle um, and all those colors going out so that um, Aralda di Piolo pouring paint actually um, did pour quite well and it is holding its shape um, so that was really good I'm not sure I, that I love using the um, strainer that I was using it wasn't that easy to kind of get a pattern out of the paints um, but it was an experiment and um, so hopefully you enjoyed that little experiment. We've all um, learned something today, I'm sure. Okay, so I'll bring you down for a close-up. Okay, so here we come down for the close-up of this um, interesting strainer pour, which gave us some very interesting shapes and I did a small bit of wrecking through here. And um, that was with, as I say, the Araldo pouring paint, and it did actually hold its shape quite well. So um, it's quite a good one if you're a beginner and you're worried about what to mix your paints with. I didn't have to mix this with anything. It's just straight out of the bottles. And um, as you can see, the colours have held their shape um, and patterns really well. So um, I'm not sure I love the composition of this one too much, but... Um, at least you can see how those paints work and uh, they worked very very well okay so that's it for today guys hopefully you enjoyed that one and we'll see you back here in studio 33 in the not too distant future until then stay safe bye bye <music>